we are demonstrating the Bouvier maneuver and the use of the Bouvier maneuver in determining tendon transfers for correction of claw hand. So here is a subject that demonstrates the claw hand which is characterized by hyperextension at the metacarpophalangeal joint and flexion at the interphalangeal joints. Before doing the Bouvier maneuver, one must establish that the proximal interphalangeal joint can be passively extended. In this patient, I am unable to extend the proximal interphalangeal joint passively. This suggests either one of two things. Either there is a contracture of the proximal interphalangeal joint or the long flexor muscles are shortened proximally. One can differentiate between these two causes by flexing the wrist. If the proximal interphalangeal joint can be extended as shown here after flexing the wrist, it suggests that this inability to passively extend the proximal interphalangeal joint with the wrist in neutral is because shortening of the long flexor muscles. If despite flexing the wrist, one is unable to straighten the proximal interphalangeal joint as here, then the reason for PIP inability to extend the proximal interphalangeal joint is due to a joint contracture. In either of these two scenarios, one must correct this deficit before doing a Bouvier maneuver. The Bouvier maneuver is to be done in patients where the proximal interphalangeal joint can be passively extended, as shown here. Once we have established passive extension of the proximal interphalangeal joint, the maneuver is done by stabilizing or correcting the hyperextension of the metacarpophalangeal joint using the other hand and then asking the patient to straighten the finger. In this case, he is able to straighten the finger. This suggests that a tendon transfer that addresses only the MCP hyperextension is sufficient. However, once we stabilize the proximal interphalangeal joint, the metacarpophalangeal joint, as shown here, and if the patient is unable to straighten the proximal interphalangeal joint, in this case, the tendon transfer must not only address the metacarpophalangeal joint, it must also address the proximal interphalangeal joint. This is done by inserting the tendon transfer distally. Thank you.